No, this is not a joke. This man is balling. Pokemon's got a lot of well-designed monsters in it. It also has watch all design. It's a very subjective word, you know? Something that might skyrocket your serotonin might give somebody else clinical depression. But in Pokemon, similar to most fandoms, there is a general consensus of certain takes. Most would say Kingdra is pretty cool, but I don't think there are many people that want to ask Aromatisse to tango with it. Greetings, I'm Professor Snack, a Pokemon design researcher, and a popular take that I disagree with is that the Voltorb line here are lazy designs. So in this taxpayer-funded thesis, let's talk about why I think the Voltorb line is cool, and good. Conceptually, I think Voltorb's design's pretty neat, but most people would say otherwise, which is fine. It's okay to be wrong. You're Pokemon fans. Being wrong is like your 9 to 5. But before we talk about why he's cool, let's explain why people think he's not so cool. He's a f***ing ball. In a game where you can wield the power of god, dragons, actual weapons, dinosaurs, and ducklets, who would ever go, Oh, that's great and all, but I prefer my Pokemon to have a radius of 9 inches, thank you very much. You want your team to look cool or cute. Mons that'll decimate your opponents or little friends that you could, I, I don't know, take a bubble bath with. <laughs> It doesn't help that Bulfa and Ligma over here aren't the best in combat either. Electrode's fast. He's also round. That's all I can say though, like what, base 80 special attack? My dog's got base 80 special attack! The only damaging moves Electrode and Voltorb get are normal and electric type moves. No, that's great coverage, what more do you need? At this rate, Rhyperior's putting Electrodes in his cereal every morning. What are they gonna do to stop him? Use Eerie Impulse? So as we established, Voltorb isn't the prettiest girl at school. Studies show that it's Gorbis, by the way. And he's not winning any contests, he's not winning any battles, so why do I like him? Well, I have a question for you, audience. What is Voltorb based on? This might come as a shocker, but yes, Voltorb is considered to be based on the Pokeball. Oh, come on! And that is the design of these guys. Many of the Pokedex entries from different mainline titles even make direct statements regarding their appearance, including Pokemon Emerald, which states, nah, but for real, if you need me to explain why they're Pokeballs, you're either beyond repair, or you're one of my mom's Facebook friends watching this, and in that case... Hi, Miss Nancy, I hope you're doing well. Specifically, they're based on the original concepts for the Pokemon catching device, as they lack the center button, black rim, jaw thingy. So in Gen 1, they really nailed their appearance as a Pokeball, but now in modern games, the resemblance is a little off. And I get it, Game Freak, they designed Voltorb Electro before the final Pokeball designs. It's hard to get things right ahead of time. Believe me, I, I, I am terrible at planning stuff. So why should we fund your thesis on Voltorb's design? Well, it's quite simple, really. And that's the wrong PowerPoint. This also explains why Electrode is upside down instead of being something like a Great Ball or Ultra Ball or Friend Ball or Great Ball. Also, unique designs for these variants didn't really exist at the time, so Electrode ended up being flippy over here. What you smiling like that for, bro? You don't even have arms. Or Evolve and really flip my perspective. If you don't get your Pepsi logo looking ass out of here. But there's another reason as to why Electrode is just an upside down Pokeball, but we'll get into that later. For now, let's explore Voltorb and Electrode's other design origins. So putting Voltorb's data in the system here, we can figure out what Voltorb's other design inspiration is. Oh, it didn't work. Oh. Kaboom! Kapow! Kersplish! The Voltorb line's roots also lie in explosive origins as their boss. This is referenced in a ton of Electrode's Pokedex entries. Uh, Smash, Electrode, blows up. And yeah, you probably knew this. Unless you didn't, then uh, hi again, Miss Nancy. So, Pokeballs and explosives. Not really all that groundbreaking when looked at individually. But when you combine the two pieces together, the true majesty that is the Voltorb line finally emerges. A mon that not only only stands on its own as a very fun concept, but also shows the ways in which Game Freak has changed over the years. Voltorb may be an explosive, yes, and maybe a Pokeball. If you told me that, I would not disagree with you, but first and foremost, Voltorb is really... Ha! I knew it! I knew he was based on squares! Get Harvard on the phone right now! Yes, Voltorb and Electrode are chests, but more importantly, they're mimics. Not only are they mimics, but I feel conceptually they're mimics first over Pokeballs and bombs, though the latter two inspirations seem to be the popular consensus. Now you might be wondering, what's a mimic? Or why is it important? And I understand that question. Pokemon fans don't actually like video games, so how are you supposed to know? Mimics are a popular enemy used in JRPGs and other fantasy settings, where you come across an item or a chest only to be ambushed by a powerful enemy. Usually some sort of chest monster, could be an artifact, an angry teardrop. Shin Megami Tensei is a little weird though. Voltorb is based on Pokeballs, but not the ones you pelt Garatina with, rather the ones you find in the overworld. Again, this concept was best implemented in red and blue version as Voltorb's overworld sprite was identical to that of an item on the ground. In later games, finding a Voltorb is less like, oh, and more like, I'm sorry, what? And I think it's cute. 
Yeah, that's right. I said Kanto Voltorb's cute. I'm raw as fuck. In the context of the first generation, Pokemon was new. It not only had to establish itself as, you know, a thing, but convey to the player the world. How is this different than any other JRPGs you've played before? There are mimics in other games. Here's the Pokemon mimic, and it looks like the balls. Not some fantasy, stupid, stinky piece of mahogany. This is also why Electrode is merely flipped upside down upon evolution, so it can still act as a mimic. Come on, it's cute. No? You just like the new Hazuian form? Okay, I guess I'll just hire someone to curb stomp my nuts then. It's all part of the scientific method. Voltorb also reminds us that, yeah, Pokemon is a JRPG. Now look, I get it, I get it. You're Pokemon fans. You're the bubble boys of video games, so you probably haven't played many other JRPGs in your day. But Pokemon is one. Or at least they had their roots in them. I think they're still JRPGs, but nowadays they're kind of treated as their own little subgenre. Things have not been the same since they made Thwacky. But think about it. In Kanto, the first monsters you encounter are rats and birds. The first boss has a big rock snake. The second has a psychic starfish. There are caves, forests, little towns. If you replace the gyms with dungeons and the protagonist with a band of spiky-haired individuals with dead relatives, you'd have yourself a bona fide Tales of Final Megami Sona 14 director's cut. And Voltorb reminds us of that by representing a very typical JRPG enemy. And I like him for that. It's endearing. When discussing Pokemon, the construct of design isn't necessarily restricted to, is this creature visually appealing? I think concept and purpose are extremely important in Amon's design as well. I love Porygon Z. He's one of my friggin' boys, but purely based on looks, he looks like a Picasso wet dream. But in concept and purpose, he's f***ing rad. A glitched Porygon 2 that serves as a wall breaker? I'm there, dog. I, I want to party with this guy. I don't even care. I'll download the malware. So conceptually, I think Voltorb is the guy. Considering Voltorb the Pokeball Pokemon is doing him a huge injustice. He's the mimic Pokemon. I don't know why people even start thinking he's just some ball in the first place. Hey, Harvard. Baby, it's me. Let me guess. He's not actually a square. He's a ball. The sex was mid. Don't say that! Whatever, it's stupid. I'm making my own Pokedex. He's Mimic Man now. Wait, he can't even learn the move Mimic by level up! Come on, man! So we know that Game Freak has a nice little concept here with our buddy Voltorbicus. But how did they handle his execution or his quote-unquote purpose? Poorly. That, that's it. I don't, I don't have a joke. It's just bad. It's just a terrible job. For a character that's so smooth, Boy, was he handled roughly. This is where our circular friend here falls a little flat. Voltorb, and by extension Electrode, are gimmick Pokemon. They're unique. They serve a specific purpose in the world or even through gameplay. Your unknowns, your Wobbuffet, Cast Form, Smeargle, Shuckle, all gimmicks. But I wouldn't say Voltorb reaches that level of gimmickness necessarily. He's still more of his own mom, just not as committed to the bit. His gimmick, that of course being a mimic, is done thematically, but it also works its way into the gameplay as well. But this is where things are a little, uh, uh, how do I phrase this? Computer, divide by zero. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. You done messed up, game freak! <laughs> I bet you never heard anyone say that in a video on the internet. In order to better understand what I'm about to lay out to y'all, I'm gonna use a comparison. Our boy Wobbuffet here, when you run into him, whether it be in the wild or via another trainer, you hit that panic button like there's a wasp nest on your cock. You feel threatened. Shadow Tag doesn't allow you to switch out, and if they hit you with a beefy counter or a mirror coat, that's bye-bye, more Pico. And I think with Electrode in particular, they were going for a similar reaction. In my personal opinion, Pokemon like Electrode and Wobbuffet were created as an enemy monster first and a usable Pokemon kind of second. Let's break it down. You're playing through Pokemon Red, you're going through the power plant. You find an item on the ground. Oops! Oh no! Uh, uh, this is a problem! Electrode is the fastest mod in the game, packing self-destruct! I'm done for! That's it! Only thing we have to do now is throw my Game Boy at the wall! That's what Game Freak kinda wanted when you stumbled upon 4 over 3 pi times radius cubed over here. In actuality, running into an Electrode is about as threatening as your 6-year-old cousin trying to pinch you. Hey Electrode, how's it going? Ow, dude, can you like... Not do that? Yeah, self-destruct can be devastating, and with Electro's 27% crit rate due to its speed and Gen 1's mechanics being held together by paper clips and string, it can be a threat. But again, it's only Gen 1 where this is the case. Later games, he's at the same 6% crit rate as everyone else. Also, I've done the calculations, and self-destruct in red and blue doesn't even kill the falling Pokemon if they're the same level as Electrode. It's everybody. Almost everybody lives. I'm also now only just realizing this in editing, but you only find Voltorbs in the power plant acting as mimics in Generation 1, 
not Electrode. And like, yeah, that makes things a little different, but I don't care. Honestly, it should only prove my point further that these things fail as mimics, because as a Voltorb, it's doing even less damage. Also, in my calculations, I'm not really sure how IVs work, or DVs as they're called in Gen 1. This game's weird. So my numbers could be a little flawed, but that shouldn't really matter. Self-destruct from an Electrode, regardless of its DVs or nature or skewability, should not be doing only 70% to a Kakuna. That sh nature, no. No. And that base 50 attack stat, oh! Oh my god, get that out of here! There are children watching! Oh god, I hope Miss Nancy didn't see that. So this table shows us that in battle, Electrode is pretty terrible. However, this chart shows us that conceptually, Voltorb Electrode are, quote, pretty dope. However, the graph that we have for, and I quote, how well executed is Voltorb slash Electrode at being a mimic, shows us that... Does anyone know what that means? That's why I only like these guys. I'm not really head over heels for them. Game Freak made mimics. They just didn't do the best job. Better luck next time. <laughs> Better luck the third time. A mimic is supposed to be a trap, a devastating one, a huge encounter that offers you great rewards for conquering. You can get absolutely sauced by a wooden box with a tongue, but hey, I mean, you can get some good XP and a rare weapon drop. Mmm. See where I'm going with this? Encountering an Electro is a slight eye-opener, but it'll never be some sort of challenge. And there's like zero reward when defeating these guys. It's not like you get an item or even a decent EXP gain or nothing. You get nothing! I genuinely think if Electro nailed the Mimic archetype, he'd at least be a little more popular. So let's fix the Voltorb line. The Pokemon Institute of Research and Design After School Club presents to you what Voltorb and Electrode should have been. Computer, would you like to have the honors? <laughs> Reggie Rock. So let me get this straight, Mr. Alecky. You have a pure electric typing of the same height as my client here, have a similar stat distribution, you primarily learn electric and normal type moves, and you're also round? Hmm, really got me thinking. Reggie Alecky is just better electrode. And I don't even know why. It's so odd to me. It's like the Pokemon equivalent of Ganondorf being a clone of Captain Falcon in Smash. It's like, why are you two like this? What, do you guys hang out? What's going on here? Is there something more? Literally just take Reggie Lucky's stats and moves, give it to Electrode, and bada bing, bada boom, he's ready for the show! With a nice 100 in attack and special attack, Electrode's explosions could finally be, you know, explosions instead of a pimple pop. He doesn't even need the base 200 speed. Keep him at 150 and put like 20 in HP. My boy keep it at 100. And one. That's his Pokedex number. I'm funny. Why 20 in HP? Well, for the uninformed, EXP gain from defeating an enemy is based on their HP stat, which explains why Aldino and Blissey are like EXP bar Viagra. A nice 100 HP stat will at least grant the player a larger EXP reward for defeating the Mimic, rather than the poopy EXP gain from the 80 HP loser Electro. This should also go without saying, but give the player a real reward for beating these guys. You beat an Electrode? Afterwards, game should say, wow, the Electrode dropped the TM for Thunderbolt and a Denny's coupon. Oh boy. Also, Reggie Lucky's signature move, Thunder Cage, which deals special damage while also entrapping the Pokemon for four to five turns, would work beautifully on Electrode. He's a Pokeball. What do Pokeballs do? Apparently explode, I guess. They capture. Electro can do that. Let him do that. L look at that face. He would love it. Maybe a little too much, though. But this would also play into the Mimic motif in battle. If you were to encounter Electro with its high base speed, he could prevent you from escaping, go for Thunder Cage, and now you're forced to deal with him. One explosion later, and there you go. He did it. Assignment understood. A, a plus. Now, for abilities, you could also give Electrode Reggie Aleckies, that being Transistor, which boosts the power of Electro-type moves by 50%, but I'm more of a fan of giving Voltorb and Electrode Galvanize, the signature ability to Alolan Golem. Uh, Alolum. Golola. This ability turns normal type moves into electric type, while also adding a times 1.2 multiplier to the damage output. Forget exploding at that point, this thing's a nuke. Run into this in the power plant, you'll risk wiping out the entirety of Kanto while only leaving Diglets and Geodudes alive. A proper country. Now some may argue that this might make our boy a little broken, to which I reply, Wow, you guys do like being wrong, jeez. Just bring a ground type. That's it. Problem solve, I know you own a stun fist back at home. We all have one, don't lie. All these ingredients will make Voltorb and Electrode very threatening, but with the right preparations, an easy to manage encounter, which I think a proper mimic should be. Something to keep you on your toes, to keep you in line and add some extra caution to the player in case they're just moseying on by without a care in the world. Keep him in check. See that guy whistling? Get him. Pow.
Good job, Electro. You did this, the mimicking. And this is all hypothetical, but I still stand by my original take. I like the design. The idea of Voltorb and Electro. They had the potential to be very interesting. God just left them unfinished. So it is I who must correct God's work by making a 15 minute video in an institute using government funded money to explain why I like a fictional ball with a face. And I know that this guy exists, the Hazuian form, and everyone loves him because he's all ooh you kawaii, look at me, I'm made out of wood, I'm special. Just look at the fan art. People friggin' love this guy. A side note, I love how whenever a new Pokemon thing drops, artists try to draw it as fast as possible, you know, to like get the clout. And for the new Voltorb form, I just pictured a bunch of Twitter artists being like, thank God. But back on track here, the love for the new form, it's fair. It's valid. I think he's cool too. New typing? I see you, big dog. Very unique. Very unique. D great. And they, you know, did the conventional thing. They made Voltorb look visually appealing, which is nice. He's cute. And like, he didn't fix Voltorb's problems per se. He's still kind of weak. And now that there are actual treasure chests in this game, it kind of confuses the whole purpose of... Voltorb, uh, but I'm not gonna hold it against the guy. He seems nice. I'd, I'd hang out with him. Hazuian Electrode, though. Gotta be honest. A little disappointed with the guy. He carries over Voltorb's grass typing, but his signature move, Coroblast, just feels kind of misplaced. And it's not too bad. The Apricorn motif's still cute. I just thought it would've been a nice opportunity to bring Electro back to his roots, or, I don't know, make him a better functioning mimic? <laughs> That'd be crazy. Maybe give him a move instead of Chloroblast with an insanely high crit ratio, or one that buffs his crit rate to reference back to Gen 1. Or maybe some sort of new explosion, which Chloroblast sort of was, but the move works differently, so I'm not really with it that much. I digress. However, I think it's interesting, though, that people like him because he's a nuanced version of an established concept to match a new setting when that's what Voltorb was initially. And I'm not trying to say everyone's a hypocrite, it's just funny how the status quo has changed. Voltorb was a cute and original idea based on mimics, but now Voltorb is the status quo, with his new Hazuian form being the cute and original, you know, variation. It's interesting to me. I'm also not trying to say that Voltorb and Electro should be your favorite mons. They're not mine either, but don't clump them in with your Alomo, your love discs, your friggin' I don't know, Dugong. Do people not like Dugong? I don't like Dugong. The point is, he's got more going on. So show my man some respect. Voltorb shows us that even some of Game Freak's less appealing designs are a lot more creative than they initially appear. Voltorb's cool. Don't forget it. I like balls. Looks like our research here is finally complete. Time to send my data to corporate, and then we'll be swimming in a million poker bucks. Yo, what's up, Voltorb? Have a great summer.